Welcome to this episode of The Chiefs. Ako po si Robbie Alampay. I'm Ami Pamintuan. I'm Edwin Gao. Tonight, we talk about new technology and its impact on how we do things. Mm. Ikaw ba talaga yan, Ed? Ang kausap ko. <laughs> Kung nabubulol, ako yun. <laughs> <laughs> Kung dinidiretso yung salta, avatar yun. <laughs> Ay, nung isang araw, may problema, ha? Ano? Hindi ako makapagpadala sa Viber ng document. Nagbumagsak ang Viber, di ba? At uh, hindi natin cover dyan. <laughs> Telegram ang ginagamit ko. Tapos sinabi, hindi naman kayang i-regulate siya, hindi natin alam eh. Di naman mo. Pero alam mo, pag minsan iniisip ko, mas okay na nga yung mga hindi umaandar ngayon. Kesa yung mga gumagana. <laughs> at na-scam at, ka. At, at hindi mo naman alam kung totoo pala to. <laughs> Ayan, yun yung problema sa PhilHealth ngayon. Baka yung mga account natin, yung Ako. account mo. Pati daw yung mga sakit, sakit na ano, na-compromise eh. Mm -hmm. oh. Yan ang problema. Tapos ngayon, tapos ngayon, pumutok pa itong usapin din ng AI yes. sa, sa mundo natin. <laughs> Oo nga. Oo nga. Hindi, na, hindi tayo kailangan. Oo nga. Oo nga. Oo. <laughs> si, si Ed. <laughs> Sige po itong katabi ko. <laughs> hindi ka na kailangan, Ed. Laos ka na. <laughs> Ewan ko kung anong well, tinuturo sa mga schools ngayon. They'll have to, they'll have to teach digital. Apart from digital yeah, literacy, that's, that's, that's pati yung sa AI, ano? Uh, that's a given naman eh. Pero I, I suppose the discussion now in the schools is, ano eh, what's the future of uh, journalism? journalism? Yes, so, exactly. In, the, in, the, in an industry where AI is becoming more and more prominent. Lalo mm. na, na, studies are showing na bumababa nga ang trust sa yung regular news reporting, mm. ha? But it's, it's not to say that uh, we have to do away with AI. Uh. It's just, uh, we just have to make uh, certain decisions on how far we can push AI. Yes. Uh, yeah. As early as 2015, uh, a group, what, uh, 300 scientists and businessmen already... And the, the biggest businessmen. ...asked for the breaks uh, yeah. on, on AI, GPT. you know, on Chat AI GPT. development. 2015, that's Elon Musk, ah, Stephen yeah. Hawking. Yeah. Iba pa yung this year, uh -huh. yung, Chat yung open letter of 1,000 uh, mm. scientists researchers uh -huh. asking for a moratorium on uh -huh. AI development. Sila pa yan, mga techie yan. Mm. And yet, at the same time, the reality is we have been living with AI for yeah. the longest yes. time Lot already. Just lahat po it. tayo. I mean, it's not just chat yeah. GPT. Sa lahat ng bagay na ginagamit natin, if you're, Google using, if you're using a smartphone, if you're using a word processor, if yeah. you're using a computer in any way, matagal na tayo. We've been living with artificial intelligence. Ang problema lang, where to draw the line. Ano? Mm. It's interesting. Eh? The, the first person who really raised that question was, ano, was, uh, was uh, Alan Turing in 1950 yes. with his uh, paper. Uh, uh -huh. Can machines think? Mm. Matagal nang ano. Doon nagsimula ang mahabang diskusyon doon sa hanggang sa pwede mag-isip ang isang makina. Nagkaroon na nga ng mga movies about that, eh, di ba? Man, man, man versus machine. <laughs> <laughs> well, next we talk about artificial intelligence in journalism. The Chiefs will be right back. Artificial intelligence or AI-generated sportscasters spark debates online. GMA Network debuted Maya and Marco at the NCAA Season 99 Men's Basketball Tournament last Sunday. The public, however, had been quick to air their concerns online about the risks of employing AI. GMA clarified that Maya and Marco are merely presenters and are not meant to replace actual journalists. He also explains that the AI-powered sportscasters were created to complement the human aspect of their coverage. And welcome back to the Chiefs. With us uh, tonight is Rachel Kahn, a professor from the University of the Philippines College of Mass Communication. Magandang gabi and thank you for joining us tonight. Thank Good you. evening, ma'am. Good evening. Thank you for the invite. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, ma'am, uh, certainly AI is not new. We have it on our phones, we have it on our social media feeds, and so on down the line. Uh, Google Maps, uh, Google, ganun -ganun. it's all over the place. So it's not new. Uh, also, AI presenters are not new then. Uh, Xinhua has been using mm -hmm. it since 2018. Uh, we, uh, we also see now Indonesia, Kuwait, uh, India, and all that. Uh, so what, uh, from your perspective, what is the big difference now that uh, we're seeing it here in the Philippines with AI anchors? Well, for me, um, AI should be more of a tool than, you know, having the anchors. If we notice, even in, in the world uh, media, you only find, find those AI anchors in Asian countries. 
uh, where media is semi-controlled or fully controlled. Mm. So it sends that kind of a signal. No, like that China. Uh, like China, it in India, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. who are using it more, um, you know, in more, in more networks than any other country. So it sends a signal of um, synthetic media. It, for me, it sort of um, undermines the, you know, we're already trying to bring up the trust in media, mm. the credibility mm. of media, yes. the, the authenticity of media. And then you have something like this. So you're signaling that synthetic media, inauthentic media. Mm. So for me, it's not a good timing, and it's also not really the best use of AI. But what if that is also part of the argument? Uh, not to mm -hmm. say that the, 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 the intervention is correct or wrong, mm -hmm. right? only mm -hmm. time will tell. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, but what if, because I've, I've read I, I, I forget where exactly, I, I, so I don't want to attribute it to anyone, but I did read that point that eh, the content creators who are actually the bigger disruptor to us than AI, mm -hmm. the content creators, the individual content creators, the influencers and so on, eh, iba dun, gumagamit na ng AI. Eh. Yes. We've, we're behind the curve in you know, playing along with the algorithms, understanding these new platforms. Now we're going to be behind the curve even in the use of AI. And so that was precisely actually part of the argumentation also, that media uh, credibility and reach is going down. Mm -hmm. We get that, and I think that was your point. Your point is, all the more, bumababa na nga, gagamit pa tayo. And what if the argument is precisely, bumababa na nga, we have to try something. But then you could use AI precisely to enhance reporting in terms of AI as tools for research, tools for investigative journalism, um, tools for also speeding up some reports. Now, for example, the sports. Do you really need um, you know, anchors for sports news or would you rather have AI be able to cover more events? You know, give you, the, the, for example, they use Reuters and um, uh, C, uh, ABC in the States use it to be able to call all the scores of all the different states, mm. you know, with even the sports, small towns, even uh, small towns, mm, even mm. high schools, mm. you know, they're able to gather that information because of AI. But it, they even use it to write news. No, mm. but in the end, the anchors, um, you know, they collate that. The AI collates it and it's reported more but traditionally. Is it, is it therefore, is it the anchors? It is. Is it the presentation of a virtual human of a virtual face that? That where you think people are drawing the line here? Because everything else you mentioned happens on the back end. Yes. The research, uh -huh. mining the data, even the writing. Um, is that where the line is? Well, I think it's just so premature um, in its use here because it's, you know, it's, it's sending a wrong signal. Instead of we're, we built up AI as a back end tool first, you know, have an AI policy in place. And then maybe in the future, if there's a need, but that's the, that's the key here, is there a need, diba? Or it's just, you know, it's just a gimmick. It's just something new, it's, it's a novelty. That's what it is. But what are the consequences of it? It's a big question still, right? Are you the tatanong ko, so Right now, you told us that uh, it's used already for data journalism, mm -hmm. AI. Saan pa? Where is it used? Sa, sa mainstream media? Um, in, the, in the U.S., it's used um, for economic business news. Yes. For example, for covering the stock market. Mm -hmm. you know? So they're always up to date with um, you know, whatever the, you know, the daily stocks because they can't keep up with yes. um, covering. So with, a, with human coverage, they're able to cover only 300 corporations mm. a day. Now they're able to cover 3,000 to 5,000 a day using AI. Um, but basically, the reporting there is just, you know, um, yes. ticker tape stock market data. Right? Oh, it's really so data. It's just data really crunching. data. Yeah. Your yeah, you interpretation, yes. your investigation, so, the presentation, that's all human. The presentation, diba? also the analysis, that's all human. Mm. Because it's something that... Um, for one thing, AI can't deliver with 
pizzazz no? <laughs> or with, mm -hmm. with Not yet. interest. Not yet. Yes. Mm -hmm. But, but um, yeah, so, so, so far, that's the general use mm -hmm. abroad of AI. So you're talking about using AI as a tool mm -hmm. for journalism. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, some of these companies, these media companies, are looking at AI as a, as a means to automate the, yes. the news process. It means, again, from uh, data gathering, I mean, crunching the, the figures from uh, the World Wide Web, mm -mm. Uh, putting together the script, all the way to 24 hour broadcasting, mm. automated. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, that was what, part of the argument that some of these networks uh, used. Uh, and they were saying, uh, now we can do it 24 hours a day. Which uh, is yes. what's raising concern among journalists. Right. Because right? one aspect, I suppose, uh, is the production mm -hmm. aspect. Eh? Yung, yung, you show an avatar that's talking, uh, mm -hmm. delivering the news that was written by somebody else, uh, by a human person, yeah. versus uh, a everything computer doing everything, AI. pulling mm -hmm. in information mm -hmm. from uh, the newsroom, from the World Wide Web, putting it together, writing the script, and then delivering it through uh, an avatar, yes. all by one machine. Mm -hmm. So there's uh, an me. What, what, what's your perspective on that? Right now, um, the AI can actually, as I said, call all that information. If that information is fed to an avatar and, and reported, yes, it can do it. But at the same time, um, can it do the analysis, a human analysis? Mm -hmm. Not yet. All right. Eventually, it might be. But for me, it's already... A sense of um, there, there are several dangers there. One, you have the extreme capitalism, where it's just a lot of data that um, will feed further. Um, you know, it doesn't give us, it doesn't give us the why. It gives you mm -hmm. all the other W's, but except the why. Um, and then the other thing is that news will now be so easily manipulated mm. with AI. So. That will really make um, news, you know, in the hands of the powers that be. They can, if if the human element, the uh, ethical journalist can be removed, I'm scared for the industry. Also, what does that say about journalists now? I mean, yes. people who go on cam. If uh, if you have a machine that yeah, because the, the <laughs> journalist who goes the journalist who goes on cam has a conscience. The AI yes. doesn't, right? So. Even if the AI is capable, should we let it? Mm -hmm. That's the big question. It's not so much of the capability, but in, in terms of ethics, it's the ought. But does it just, just, that just shift? Again, without, without judging um, a, literally a talking mm. head, a digital yeah, literally, talking head. Uh -huh. A talking head delivering news just straight out from facts, if not straight out from data. I can see some people saying, yeah, well, it's the same thing if you just put text there for me to read. The wala na mga other than that's just a fake person. But to your point, the yung sa W, the why, mm -hmm. a, <clears throat> um, that's the part siguro na hindi kaya ang pagtan. Like, I don't know if you'll take an interview from a computer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's one thing yeah. for us to be exchanging ideas and us reporting on you, but I don't know if you will what if we sit a computer here mm -hmm. and the computer actually has the capacity to ask you questions? But therefore, doesn't that just say that, well, maybe journalists in the future will specialize on the why? And then everything else is fair, is fair game. Right now, that's exactly what um, those companies like the, the big multinational companies are doing. No? They're using their, the reporters that they have to do the more in-depth reports, mm. which AI cannot do. So they've left the, you know, the stock market ticker tape reporting, the sports course reporting mm. to the AI. And then um, the interviewing of the players, you know, mm. the, in, the looking at how the team interacts, mm. that's all human. You know, and that's what makes the story interesting. Mm. Yeah. Right? So, well, the, the other aspect, of course, is uh, editorial judgment. Mm. Uh, yes. as, as journalists, you're supposed to decide what angle is important and what is relevant right. to the public and to the circumstances of the time. Yes. Can... But, but, but to Robbie's point, sabi niya niya, kung talking head ka lang, mm. you mm. can actually be replaced by AI. If you're just reading something, mm. You which can is, just put any face there and right. you, can, you can read whatever. Right. whatever oh, which is screen. precisely why journalists should actually 
hone their skills, yeah. no? especially in reportage and especially in in-depth analysis, which is what I'm telling my students now. If you don't want to be replaced by chat GPT, you have to be able to answer the why. Because I, I ran my, my exercises in news writing through chat GPT. Yeah. Okay? It has no, it can write an inverted pyramid, no problem. Mm -hmm. Probably but can it, write it better than <laughs> yeah, which, which is actually yeah. true, objectively yes. true. Objectively, yeah. it, can, it can write an inverted pyramid, but it cannot tell you its news values. Yeah. It, it yeah. does not yes. judge correctly. Yeah. So I keep telling my students, the highest you're gonna get as a grade is a, a two or a C, hmm. no, depending hmm. on your, yeah. because it can't get you a, yeah. you know, a 100 score because its news values will always be wrong. It yeah. will always highlight hmm. the wrong I, thing. I do think, I mean, it's, it's a good point. No? Parang how, would you, how would you address it to, to your mm -hmm. students, to future journalists? Mm -hmm. And I, I think you're right, because the skill is no longer the right thing. Eh? Mm -hmm. Because I use chat GPT, I, I use it to draft, and you know, it's, it's objectively true. Sa totoo lang, na when you ask it to draft, it does draft better than many young interns, many young people fresh out, and, and frankly, many even veteran journalists. It, if you if grammar was just your mm -hmm. your your basis, but the skill of asking questions, the skill of interviewing, the skill of probing, that part is where I think. Ayon, parang hindi ko ma imagine yun. In, everything yeah, else, in deciding, everything else. In deciding what the lead is. Oh, yes. but kasi everything else, I will, I will, I will always add, not yet. Kasi yan. But asking the relevant questions, mm -hmm. yun, hindi ko ma-imagine. I can't say not yet. Eh, dun sa, ano. Kasi right now, the way AI works, it's, it depends on what, it, what you input. So it's, yes. still, it's still the human mind. Um, when you use the AI, you input certain data. So if you wanted to write a correct story, you input, you say, this is the lead I want. This is the, this is the, you know, the data of the story. Then mm. it can fix it. Then it can actually do it mm. right. But there's, there's still human guidance there. Mm. And, then, and then you have to you know, look at it and see, Tama ba? You know, do I correct this? You, you still need to tweak it. What, what was the reaction in UP MassCom? To Maya and Marco. You know, I haven't gotten I haven't gotten around to asking them. Yeah. Mm. Um, yeah. Because I haven't. Thing. I have Thursday's in class. Ko Wednesday pa lang. Then I go. I go. I go. Well, no, no. Unang muna balita nito. Yeah. Nung nakita mo to. Uh, Unang una. What was the reaction? Swabi sila. Oh, ang right. maganding uh, ibang itsura. Uh -huh, uh -huh. mm. oh. And the dire dire sa mga salta. I mean, uh, ako bulo lang ko. Sila hindi. Pero ako curious din ako. <laughs> diba? What was the data that led you? To them, looking like this. I mean, there must have been market. Oh, yeah. There must have been market, market research. Na hindi yes. pwedeng kamo kani edling gawian, de ba? Pwede pwede. Sa mga kagat bayas sa bayan. De ba? But isn't that like the standard features of a uh, twenty-year-old these days? Oh. This avatar. I mean. Oh. I see some no, of my students actually. No, they don't look like the standard people I know. <laughs> no, but their features, not not as a whole, but their features are something I would well, see. Well, I'm, I'm, features I'm, that I'm, people would like to. I'm, I'm hanging out with the wrong crowd because I don't have any journalists. The features that people would like to have. <laughs> Aspirational. But anyway, but anyway, going back to that question, you know, now, well, you know, when you saw this, uh, what was on your mind? What did, what did you see? What did you feel when you saw this happening? Um, well, my, my initial, I know, this is wrong. Yeah. <laughs> that was my initial um, reaction. It's like, it's not the time, nor, nor is there a need for it. Um, you know, they're basically doing the same thing as if you were putting text. Mm. Yes. Um, you know, running the text and the scores through. So, a voiceover could have done the same. Yeah, well, readers, yeah, yeah. Well, 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 but you, you spend so much on creating avatars like this, but is the expense even worth it? Uh, one of our one of our colleagues, um, and obviously, just like all of us, we are thinking about AI. I, I do think there's a certain inevitability uh, to it. Not just certain, uh, a certain, malaking inevitability of AI already being part of our lives. Mm -hmm. But one of our colleagues um, uh, messaged me and he said, you know, uh, one basic test if you're going to deploy AI is you answer this question, ano bang problema ang sinosolve natin? Diba? What, mm -hmm. what problem 
in the process or in the content or in the product are you trying to, to solve? And if you have a legitimate answer there, then by all means, experiment with it. But he was saying, with this one, it's a real question. What was the problem that, that, that GMA was trying to solve when they said, let's deploy or let's play with, with sportscasters? Maybe they were trying to see if the ratings will go up. Yeah, viewership, <laughs> sure. viewership, right? Yeah. Audience reaction. It was an experiment. Mm. Yes, yeah. but if it right. turns out that it is solving a problem. Let's say, mm. let's say the problem for all of us is declining reach. Let's say the problem for all of us is lower engagement, especially with young people. What if this actually shows up in their data na? Ito ma, ito mas engagement namin sa millennials. Ito mas engagement namin sa... Mm. I'm not saying it's going to happen, but what if it does? What if it does mm. come back with an answer that actually, yes, did, this did solve a problem? I think it will uh, increase ratings because it's a novelty, but only in the beginning because people will tire of it. It's not yes. like... It's going to be which is a typical AI. It will yeah. be the same. It's just a loop. You know, you're just changing data, but your formula is the same. So it's like writing a, 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 a new story that you're just sticking to the five W's and H, and you're not really putting the people there, you know, the background, the context. Diba? So in the, in the end, you're just a news brief. You're just uh, scrolled. Yeah. It's the same as a scrolling yeah. But, but on the other hand, what's the With long, the voice. what might be the long-term impact on journalism? The long-term impact is that people, yun na nga, yung, my guess is that it's going to um, make people start doubting or yes. even increasing distrust with the mm. media. Mm. That's mm. the bad mm. side or the possible consequences or mm. the possible backfiring of this. And, and of course, it takes, it will take Time to tell, no. But yes. but for me, it's the wrong signals that we're sending by having something like this. You mentioned a while ago, uh, it's a uh, it's uh, medio advantageous to certain uh, governments and countries and cultures where mass restrictive. Uh, yes. Mm. Yung, 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 You'd ano. wonder even in the world why if the technology has been there, it's not it's not like yeah. it's new, mm. right? Yes. But why are you know the big companies not using it? Why is Reuters not using it? Why is Bloomberg not using mm. it? But you have channels, small channels in India using China. it. China is mm. using it severe, uh, uh, much. Soon probably they'll use it in in the other like Hong Kong or Macau, mm. places where they want to control media. You know they don't have to because argue are, with uh, human beings. Uh, because these are literal virtual puppets. Right. Mm. You know, you don't. It's it, you don't have to try to control a puppet because it's already controlled. Hmm. Yes. It already has strings. Okay, isa ako isang tanong lang because kanina you mentioned, you know, uh, media companies and the sector should come up with their policies, mm -hmm. uh, their protocols. What would be your reminders if we sat down either as companies or as groups or as an entire sector? What would be some key reminders as we as we consider? Uh, talking about the ethics um, and the protocols and the values of using AI? Um, well, just yesterday I was discussing with my students social responsibility. No, it's something that I don't think we can expect from AI. Um, it's something that should be in AI policy. Um, concern for the audiences necessarily means what do you use AI for? So you only use it when it can enhance reporting, when it can enhance transparency rather than make a mull of things or make things even more muddy. So if you really want to serve your audience, then it should be used precisely so that you can do more in-depth reporting. Mm -hmm. You can expand coverage also. You know, the, the human reach is, is, is limited, but with AI, we can, we can reach more things. We can gather more data at a faster speed. That's what, for me, AI should be used for. You know? In fact-checking, we can cover more bases in terms of monitoring um, disinformation channels because of AI. So there are very much, there are good uses of AI if we use it correctly. And I think that's where our policy should focus on the right use 
No? Like any technology, di ba? Any technology that's introduced, it can be used for the good or the bad. No? So um, if we want to have stewardship in the industry, that's the first thing we should do is make sure that it's used properly. Okay. We'd like to say thank you very much to Rachel Kahn, uh, professor from the University of the Philippines College of Mass Communication. Ma'am, maraming salamat for joining us tonight. Thank you, Professor. Maraming salamat. Thank you very much. And next, we are talking about scams and uh, hacking the chiefs. We'll be right back. being demanded by the hackers of PhilHealth. Medusa set a $300,000 ransom for the stolen data of PhilHealth, which it threatened to release online if the agency does not pay up. The ransom data were collected, including personal information of administrators and copies of memoranda. PhilHealth assures sensitive information of members have not been compromised. Wag po mag-aalala ang ating mga miyembro at patuloy pa rin po naman natin mapupuha ang beneficyo na manggagaling sa PhilHealth. Welcome back to the Chiefs. And with us tonight is uh, Ronald Gustillo, the National Campaigner of Digital Pinoy. Sir, magandang gabi and thank you for joining us tonight. Good evening. Good evening. Po. Good evening, pa. Good evening po. Thank Sir, you for having us. Sir, dami natin pag-uusapan ngayon. Pero let me start off with uh, Phil Health. Uh, ransom. <laughs> Ransomware. Ransomware. Ransom tayo ng 300,000 pesos. Dollars. 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 dollars ha? And gobyernong pinaparansom. I mean, how significant is that breach? Well, uh, parang medyo din na downplay nga po, no? Saying na walang member... Walang apektado masyado. Uh, ...data information na na compromise but then again tingin ko yung mga hackers hindi naman magde-demand yan ng ganyan kalaki yes. kung konti lang yung nakuha nila di ba ah. ah. so somebody should be held liable for this incident kasi you feel health as maraming feel health executives highest pay executives sa government and yet mm. we're having this kind of incident so nagbabayad ba tayo ng malaki sa mga executives para ganito lang yung pag ano nila sa pagpapatakbo nila dun sa ahensya di ba i think yung yung security ng information ng mga members and employees dapat of paramount importance to eh. sa kahit anong ahensya pa ng gobyerno mm. di po ba so it's unacceptable na nangyari to lalo sa gobyerno di ba pero but who can be held accountable if you help chan eh health health expert chan yung, yung executive po yan definitely yan kasi they are the one managing the ano eh the whole agency eh. so dapat kasama yung kasama sa trabaho nila na ensure po na yung mga data ng mga members, employees. Y yan ang tatanong is, ko. Yung ano, government agencies ba nila may capability to protect our data? Kasi we're shifting mm. to e-governance. Feel health yan. Sasabihin ng mga opisyal, ano naman malay namin kami, health insurance kami. Mm. Anong malay namin sa data protection? Actually, or... may related dun yung tanong ko. Eh. Oh. Gano'n kasimple o gano'n kahirap ba yung sinasabi mo? Dapat, nagawa, dapat nagawa nila yan. Uh -huh. Gano'n kahirap ba yun gano, o gano'n kasimple yun in this day and age? Well, mahirap din po talaga. Uh, hmm. Siyempre yung cyber, usapin ng cyber security, talaga pong nagde-develop yan eh. As time goes by. Parang kumbaga, uh, we're always playing, ano, catch, up. catch up with uh, the cyber criminals. Hmm. Diba? So, importante na uh, they plan ahead. Hmm. Ang problema, at uh, does the government have the means to pay yes. experts para i-ensure na in tip-top condition yung ating ano, cybersecurity hmm. platforms? Hmm. Diba? Yung, yung tip-top, ta there's a way to standardly, to objectively say, yan, tip-top yan, medyo state-of-the-art tayo dyan. Oh, is, that, is there an objective way of saying that? Well... Pwede kasi po natin siyang i-base doon sa mga available na ano eh, technology sa ibang bansa. But then again, ang question, kaya bang bayaran ng gobyerno yung Masosolusyon na ba yan ng Confidential Intelligence mm. Funds? Uh, Lalo na sa DICT. <laughs> pwede ba doon ah, ano? Lalo na sa DICT. So, so, diba? so, kasi sir, well, all these problems uh, have to do with security. Yes. Tama po. So I, I, think, I think yung mga government agencies na nagmamonitor ng mga cyber crime, limbawa yung DICT, I think they, they deserve to get confidential funds as long as they comply 
with but the law states kung paano nila gagamitin yung confidential funds no it, that includes yung pagmonitor doon sa mga cyber criminals na nag target doon sa mga database na hawak ng gobyerno but the Pero task hindi ba of napaka, napaka massive noon ha kasi yung cyber crime unit ng mga law enforcement agencies ang inaano niyan public eh hmm. di ba Halimbawa, kami na, biktima kami, we go to them, magko-complain kami. Yes. Pero yung mag-monitor talaga ng mga government agencies natin, napakarami niyan, including LGUs, all with business permit, mm. Mm. Ano, mga ganun-ganon, yung local and national, sino ba talaga dapat ang in-charge dyan? Kasi sabi ni Ivan Uy, of the DICT, na hindi daw natin, we, we can't find enough people na pwede uh, labanan yung mga hacker. We don't have enough, they don't have enough. Personnel. Well, supposedly po kasi yung mga government agencies and even yung mga companies, meron silang data privacy officer who shall ensure that the data they are um, mm. holding is uh, safe. Mm. Diba? So the quest, mandated yan. Mandated Every po office yan sa data it. privacy law. Mm. But then again, yung tao na yan or yung group of people that you hired to do that, do they have the means to do that? Mm. Diba? That's the question. Eh. So... It's one thing to hire people, pero yung tools ba nila ah, sufficient para magawa nila yung trabaho nila. Okay, atras ako ng konti and, and so we can understand how everything is set up. How is everything set up? For example, when we, when we talk about the IT infrastructure, uh, whether it's public-facing websites uh, down to yung, yung back-end ng mga ahensya, kanya-kanya ba silang infrastructure? Or especially now that we have a DICT, is there a standard that everybody has to comply with? Is it one supplier for the whole country, from national to local? Or literally, kanya-kanyang hanap ng supplier? Uh, ang aware po tayo, lalo yung uh, local, depende kasi sa budget nila eh. hmm. Sa budget na ano, siyempre, yung aid, government agencies, iba-iba po ng budget. Hmm. So, minsan, pinagkakasya lang nila kung ano yung meron sila. Hmm. So, yun yung, that's where the pub- oh, sige, problem lang tayo sa national level. Let's say all the departments. Do they, do they build their own infrastructure? Or is that as a centralized effort to have one uh, sound um, and safe structure for everyone? For that, hindi po tayo sure kung may standard silang sinusundan or meron bang isang supplier. No? Pero ang observation natin, merong mga ahensya na hindi wala pang incident mm. ng uh, data compromise meron ding nagkaroon na ng incident mm. ang nakaka-worry diyan halimbawa yung PNP mm. nagkaroon sila ng data breach mm. yung PhilHealth merong data breach yung Comelec mm. dati nagkaroon di ba so merong specific agencies na tina-target eh. and these agencies meron po silang hawak ng malalaking database so mm. dapat Etong mga agencies na nagse-secure ng malalaking database, sila dapat yung Listo. nag-aalat mm. ng malaking pondo to ensure na safe yung data nila. Mm. Uh, are we able to determine whether kasi, kasi it's uh, naka-down yung system ng PhilHealth uh, until the ransom is paid. But but once they put it back up, I suppose kasi that means kasi that uh, somebody else is in control right now. Mm. Once they put it back up, are we how can we be certain that the data has not been tinkered or tampered with or touched? I ask that not just in the context of PhilHealth, but in the context of other agencies that uh, may have sensitive data, for example, the PNP and COMELEC. Once uh, they're able to get in, are they able to tamper with the contents and are we able to, to determine whether the contents still are legitimate? Mer- merong technology para ma- matamper nila. Eh. And I think for them to be able to hold the data hostage, I think kaya nila. So... Kung, kung yung assurance po na natamper ba o hindi, tingin ko hindi mapangahawakan ng gobyerno yung mere words ng hacker na hindi, hindi namin pinakailaman yan. Ah. They have to go through the Magka database iba ba yun? talaga. Yung hawa ko yung data mo, iba ba yun sa, I mean, with encryption and everything, iba ba yun sa nakikita ko yung data? Is it possible that they, they're holding it ransom without actually necessarily they, seeing I mean, the data? They... they Uh, I think once nakuha na nila yung, yung data, pwede na nila, they, they can actually they can see it. it. They, can see they can see it. And, uh, they can change see it. it. And they, they have actually locked it from the side of the government. Actually, hindi lang change yung concern ko eh. Can they, do we now assume na, let's say, nakuha ko yung USB ni, ni Ed, he might as well assume na kahit ibalik ko sa kanya, may kopya ako nun. Yeah. Pwede, pwede, pwede ni, the hackers can say that we have deleted it on our side. 
but then again, wala tayong ins- in- assurance that they have actually deleted it and mm. that they will not sell it to anybody else. Mm. But that's the danger kasi they have it in their possession na it's locked on the side of the government hindi ma-access ng government kasi in-encrypt nila eh. mm. So we, we don't have any assurance what will happen with the information once na in case magbayad yung gobyerno. Di ba? Yun, yun, yun yung demand ng Other hackers. Other than eh. the victims paying which is us, who might buy it? Anybody who wants to data. have access oh. to the data that, ano eh, that syempre, the cyber criminals. We are now prone to identity theft. Hmm. Di ba? Hmm. So, yung mga information ng mga members na sinasabi nilang hindi, hindi kasama doon sa nakuha, pwede po siyang magamit to uh, create uh, transactions, to make transactions sa mga banks, credit cards, etc. Well, your SIM registration is supposed to be one of the tools para labanan yan. Kumusta na? At this point, gusto nang baguhin ng mga senador yung they have to tweak daw the law. Ah, obviously, nakikita nila kung anong mga pagkukulang. Yung, look at your face. <laughs> anong tingin nyo? Anong, anong kulang at anong pwedeng baguhin? Si Bart What Simpson nakapag-register eh. <laughs> Kaya nga. Tsaka yung, <laughs> tsaka yung ngoy. Diba? Oh. Uh, sa tingin po namin, unang-una, sa tingin po namin, minadali po talaga yung SIM registration. Mm-hmm. Diba? Uh, had the telcos been given enough time, sufficient time to develop their platforms, mm-hmm. Siguro nakapag, nakagawa sila ng... Platform for identity verification. For, for, for the registration itself. Oh. Diba? Kasi po, naalala natin no first day, nag-crash yung mga registration mm. portals yes. kasi mm. pinahabol ng DICT yung selfie verification. Yes. So may oh, selfie ha. verification tayo, ha? Kaya nagkaroon ng chonggo. Kaya, tapos eto ngayon, oh. <laughs> nagamit, nag, nagamit na, nakapag-register si Bart Simpson, oh. nakapag-register yung chonggo. Si kasi nga... Oh. Ang iksi nung time frame na binigay mm. sa kanila para ma-develop yung platform mm. to make it more uh, it, so that it they can, the, the, the telcos can make their platforms be able to detect yes. yung mga fictitious ano yeah. oh, registrants. Yeah. So, malaking kulang dun sa Pero, pero sir, development. was it difficult for them to detect uh, a cartoon character? <laughs> I mean, ito yung point, Chongo, kasi some people really are hairy. Pero, <laughs> but, but a cartoon character in, in primary colors. <laughs> I, uh, uh, I don't know. May yellow, I, I, yellow. May kulay dilaw pa, di ba? Baka may hepa. Baka may, hepa. <laughs> baka may hepa. Oh. Diba? Pero, supposedly, dapat, hindi dapat mare-register yun eh. But then again, this is enough, this is, uh, this is proof of what we're saying before, way before, na wag nating madaliin yung SIM registration. Kasi they, the telcos will have to test the platforms eh. Mm. Diba, sabi nga ng mga ibang IT expert, you don't actually know what's going to, mm. what, what other problems may arise. Okay. So eto na nga, nakita na natin. Pero tingin ko, kung, kung dinaan siya sa massive testing, Ma-detect nila yan kasi pwede, pwede mo naman talagang maisip na i-register ko kaya yung cartoon characters or uh, anything that has likeness. But how hard, is it, ko, di, uh, how hard is it to clean up and to fix things after the, mahabot, the register? Mahabot, kasi mahabot nandiyan eh, di ba? And then powerful <laughs> din naman ang mga, ang mga programs, di ba? Parang, and it's been months, di ba? It's been months. How hard is it na? O sige, we will grant it. It will never be 100%, especially at the point of registration. But it's been months. How, how hard is it to, for, for it to be an ongoing concern that let's constantly weed through this? With more than 100 million registrants, mm-hmm. I think the government needs to go through every single one of the entries. Eh. Mm-hmm. Oh dear. Kasi you, you wouldn't know. If we, if, yes, uh, but going if the, through means what? Ma- hindi naman manual rin ang ibig sabihin mo. Going through it also assumes, di ba? I would, I would think it, it assumes that they there's also use, a technology that's use used anything. to deploy for that. Huh? The problem is, if na-register yung ungoy and yung cartoon characters, mm. what at, it possibly, yung mga identity ng mga tao na, na, na involved sa data leak before, pwedeng nagamit din sila ng cyber criminals to register mm. SIMs. Mm. Di ba? So, I think the, go, the, the telcos would need to review, okay. audit the registry. Kasi if, halimbawa, Ronald Gustillo has 85 SIMs registered under his name, mm. does he have, does he really need it? Mm. Or saan niya gagamitin to? 
Okay. So they will have to check with Ronald Gustillo again. Ah. Do you own these numbers? Ah, sige. Okay, no, ako, uh, na, wala, hindi na muna ako doon sa identification. Diba? Doon na tayo sa mga legit. Diba? Like ako, I registered. In fact, I was automatically registered. Postpaid. Yeah, postpaid. Diba? Automatically registered. Bakit? I mean, I think I'm asking this for everyone. Ba't nakatanggap pa rin ako ng mga, ng mga text ka? <laughs> Fishing. Ang dami, ang dami pa rin po talaga. At in fact, after dun sa, after ng SIM registration, parang nagkaroon lang ng lol. And then, nag-spike ulit eh. Hmm. So, ang, ang sinasabi nila, and talagang ito rin yung sinasabi namin, merong, merong technology to broadcast text messages without using SIM cards. Hmm. Yeah. There are softwares. Yes. So to you to to para sabihin mo na yung SIM registration will end the uh, scam and spam text. Hindi totoo 'yun. Hmm. May isa pang may, may problema, technology. Yung, may isa pang problema, yung mga Viber. Ah. Sinabi na nga na it's beyond the SIM card law, di ba? Uh-huh. Hindi hmm. hindi siya covered eh. Hmm. Eh hanggang ngayon, sa kakahit y- yung Viber ah, nagka-problema din ngayon, di ba? Nagka-problema kahapon. Yeah, yeah. And yun, talaga hindi mo matatanggal yung mga add doon eh. <laughs> Kahit paulit-ulit kang, I don't like this, it's spam. Pabalik-balik, saka lahat ng ano, lahat ng all, all sorts of scams you still get from these platforms. Yeah, mara- marami, pong, yun. marami pong platforms talaga din yung ginamit na nung mga yeah. nagpapadala. Even yung iMessage ng uh, yeah. iPhone, WhatsApp, WhatsApp mm. Telegram, Signal, ginamitan mm. po nila. So, yung ingenuity nung ano, very ingenious. Kaya po siyang yung... makover ng legislation. Y- yung, yung mga Viber, yung mga WhatsApp. Kasi hindi sila dito nag ano, hindi, hindi sila dito sila nag operate eh. Hindi sila dito na, naka-base rather. Hindi sila naka-base dito. So may, may challenge on how will the government regulate these apps. Mm. But then again, syempre, if you're operating within the jurisdiction of, the, uh, of, the, of our country, mm. you have to be liable. Di ba? Kaya nga, how, how, how can I hold them liable if they don't even have the office I, I here. I think Congress has the power to do that. Mm. If if it's possible, it's one thing na kailangan pag-usapan. But if we keep talking about, you know, can we regulate, can we legislate, are we looking in the wrong direction? Like I say, ayun yung tanong, parang, is this something that that legislation can, um, can actually address? It's something that it should be able to address. But then again, it's one thing to legislate and another thing to impl- to enforce the law. Eh. Diba? May, may, may problem din po doon sa kung paano nila ine-enforce yung batas. Kasi, yun nga, uh, may mga agencies tayo na supposedly ma- ma- mandato nila na habulin itong mga cyber criminals. Pero, do they have the funds to do that? Do they have the means to do that? Diba? I think I think the government should equip the ICT to go after these uh, uh, scammers. Kumusta ba yung digital literacy ng Pilipinas? Because everybody has a cell phone, lahat nag, ano na, nag e wallet Kumusta ba actually? Give us a picture. Well, ang Philippines po, uh, ayon sa isang report ng United Nations, isa sa mga bansa na may pinakamababang digital literacy. Mm. Considering na yung bansa natin ay isa sa mga bansang may pinakamataas na social media use. use. Diba? So, kaya the, 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 population, the whole population is very vulnerable mm. to cybercrime. Diba? Kaya there is, there is an actual need and we've been calling for the inclusion of digital literacy sa basic education curriculum natin. Kasi mm. we, are now, ano eh, we are now allowing kids yes. to hold sa elementary to use yes. gadgets pero they do not know the risk, the risks mm. of using those gadgets. So, diba? kung if, as, as young as... Uh, at what age does it start? As soon as you have a kid holding a gadget, meron yeah. na tayo dapat education doon? Well, the, the Department of Education wants to, uh, uh, they, they really want to ano, na institutionalize yung uh, blended learning. Eh. Mm. So if they're going to implement mm. blended That's learning sa basic education, sa grade 1, dapat yung grade 1 students, turuan na, na po, turuan na po mm. natin. Diba? Kasi sa totoo lang, dahil nga, medyo mataas yung digital illiteracy sa ating bansa. Even yung mga parents, hindi rin naman sila ganun ka-fluent on how to And, and what uh, about detect. the teachers? Kasi yung magtuturo Isa ng pa digital literacy, meron ba tayo? Isa do we have pa, enough people? Uh, kailangan din silang i-equip to do hmm. that. So, we are hoping that uh, experts 
in the field of uh, cybersecurity will be able to help the Department of Education in uh, crafting the module for that. Okay, it's so ironic na ang taas ng digital use natin pero ang baba natin sa digital oh. literacy. Yun nga po, yun nga po yung nangyayari talaga. Actually, it's even more frightening than, yes. <laughs> than anything. <laughs> talaga po maraming, maraming Ang target nga daw yung mga ano, micro and small enterprises, apart from, of course, yung mga vulnerable sectors sa mga bata, mga estudyante. No? Opo, kasi yung ano talaga, uh, yung tinatarget ng mga scammers, yung ano yung merong uh, matinding pangangailangan mm. 'di ba yes. yung yung usual naman na ano nila na, na bait nila ay yung ano eh, uh, quick money yes. 'di ba so ang may ang may interest diyan yung mm. nangangailangan ng pera so mm. may may socio economic aspect din talaga yung mm. doon sa usapin mm. ng pag pa, pagkagat doon sa pain mm. 'di ba so it's something that uh, it has to do with the economics as well okay um i-pull back ko lang last question uh, in terms of uh, you know protecting our data, private sector is sitting on a lot of data as well. How are they performing compared to our public sector, our government agencies? Are there lessons to be learned uh, from the private sector how they handle our, our data, um, or are they are are they all in the same boat? Well, so far, <coughs> mer- meron tayong uh, observation po na very minimal yung incidents sa private sector ng mga data data leak mm. or data uh, data compromise pero we are monitoring some cases right now yun nga yung yung kanina we had a hearing with the National Privacy Commission regarding a possible uh, uh, data breach. leak yeah. data breach kasi merong isang kumpanya na nagpadala ng spam text na targeted yung uh, w- mode mm. of employment ng ano mm. ng recipient so pero mas maganda yung implementation nila kasi hmm. baka yung pera nila yung funds nila for cyber security for protecting the data that they're holding mas malaki hmm. kesa dun sa kayang ibigay ng government hmm. so meron talaga pong matututunan yung gobyerno lalo dun sa usapin na uh, paano sila mag-allocate ng budget ah. para sa cyber so security. it is about resource allocation yeah. ah, okay okay mm-hmm. maraming salamat uh, mr ronald gustillo uh, campaigner, national campaigner ng Digital Pinoy. Thank you for Thank joining us tonight. Thank you din po. Thank Maraming you. Salamat. Here are the highlights from our conversation. Yung security ng information ng mga members and employees dapat of paramount importance to eh. Sa kahit anong ahensya pa ng gobyerno. Hindi mm. po ba? So it's unacceptable na nangyari to. Does the government have the means to pay mm-hmm. yes. experts para i- i- ensure na in tip-top condition yung ating ano cybersecurity platforms. AI should be more of a tool than you know having the anchors. If we notice, even in in the world uh, media, you only find find those AI anchors in Asian countries uh, where media is semi-controlled or fully controlled. If we want to have stewardship in the industry, that's the first thing we should do, is make sure that it's used properly. Buti pa yung avatar, hindi nabubulol. Saka hindi nabublako. And always tama ang pronunciation. Pero dahil nabubulol-bulol yung ibang tao dyan, alam ng mga tao na, ay, totoo yan. Totoo ang tao yan. At saka kumukurap-kurap. <laughs> Oo nga, hindi ko napansin nyo. Kumukurap ba yun? That's the first, hindi, ano, yeah. indication. Okay. Wow, eh. Parang napansin ng mga tao uh-huh. pag araw yung virtual, yung yung uh-huh. anchor, parang eh, hindi kumukurap to. But you know, it brings us to that, that question that's hmm. always bedeviled broadcasting eh. Do you want uh, your on-camp, on-camp people to be news readers? Yan uh-huh. na nga. Uh-huh. Hindi, yun naman ang sinasabi din nila GMA, di ba? Na ano lang naman yan eh, pang, pang, pang enhance lang ng data, mm. data reporting, mm. sabi nila. It, it's not meant to replace kasi nga syempre nag-aalala na yung mga kasama natin mm. sa profesyon na baka nga mapalitan na. Sabi nila, hindi naman yan, it cannot replace the yeah, human tsaka, tsaka obvious naman, element. diba? Obvious <laughs> naman na hindi na yung hindi yan totoong tao. I think oh. that was also something. Although may point din si oh, Professor oh, si oh, Rachel. Oo, magkakarang yung point ni Rachel na, pero ang problema is, we look at the surveys right yeah. now, public Baba confidence naman. in media, the credibility, their yes. trust is going down. Okay, ngayon, mo, pinaltan mo pa ng... Inauthentic. Oo, oh, inauthentic. Kasi if you also look at the use of these AI anchors in other countries, 
they're, also, they're being used and talagang ano, tuloy-tuloy na, 24 mm. hours. Mm. Pero sinabi mo nga, that's, that's China. Um, I mean, Russia. Merong, oh, merong, ano, merong, merong, ano, may profile India, yung bansa. Mending India, mending Indonesia, and oh. these are democracies. Mm. So, uh, it's not just China. Well, Pero, China nung, nung una. Nung, mm. Yung China kasi, at the start in 2018, when they introduced it in Xinhua, it was just a, an avatar who, who really just uh, verbalized what somebody else is writing. Mm. But the newer AI anchors, it's generative. Eh. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, the computer pulls in the data, makes the script, and then broadcasts it yeah, using yeah, an problem. avatar. Because there's a point too, right? He said, maybe you're going to be more attracted to the audience, right? Right? That's true. Visual mm -hmm. eh. yeah. But yeah. Visual is, it is, it a, eh. is it the right answer for the wrong question? Yeah, uh, 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 that's the wrong problem. Uh, which is, uh, I guess, the point. Yeah, is one thing that I do appreciate about this is now everybody's talking about this and yun din ang point ni ni, mm. ni Rachel Khan of of UP Mascom di ba na mahalagang pag-usapan natin di ba yeah. parang kasi sa totoo lang eh ay is already part of our lives di ba yeah, people just don't know it it's yeah, all over the place pagka word check nag auto word check Ikinokorekt yung grammar mo ng word processor mo. Google, pag, oh. ang pag-Google mo nga lang is using AI. Ang mm. um, pag-Facebook mo nga lang, algorithm ng AI. Mm. Pero yung final product na, the news. Kailangan, we need news that we can trust. Mm. Diba? And Siyempre, meantime, we have to persuade people na etong platform na to is more newsworth. If you want your platform to be trusted, syempre, you, you will not choose inauthentic uh, mm. platforms no? or yeah. modes yeah. of delivering the news. And in the end, will you leave it to a computer to decide what is important and what is not? Mm. Yeah, no, mm. oh. For your public. So, but it's oh, although, mukhang, mukhang inevitable nga na papunta dyan yung yeah. ano, you, we will be finding mm. uses for mukhang it. Mukhang tuloy-tuloy pa tong yung usapan Pati na to. Usapan. And din yung punto rin ni Rachel. Kailangan talaga tuloy-tuloy pa yung usapan. Mm. And equally important, she also told us, uh, yes. Kailangan the people who will be affected will also be part of that discussion. We cannot yes. just leave it to, you know, to a few people to decide this is how we're going to use it because malawakan yung mga tanong eh, malawakan yung usapan. In the meantime, gano na karami mga spam mo na natatanggap. <laughs> Sa akin, hindi problema spam, sa akin problema troll. <laughs> so, mga text message, <laughs> hindi pa rin mawala, no? <laughs> oh, hindi mo nga kailangan ng fake na mukha doon para madali ka. Oo oh, nga eh. Diba? Anyway, <laughs> that's all we have for the Chiefs. Ako po si Robbie Alampay. We hope what was discussed will keep the conversation going. I'm Ami Pamintuan. I'm Ed Lingao. We are One News, All Sides, All the Time.